episode 666. Dare to threaten me? When he got home, Rachel was just coming out. He didn't feel tired as it was much simpler than the usual work he did. He looked at Rachel, pulled her towards him, and planted a kiss on her lips. Rachel did not have time to react. He already kissed her again and again right in front of the maids. He bit her tongue until it was turning numb. Then he released her. His hand was still holding her face as he asked, Has that little friend of yours found a place to stay? That Wesley person. Rachel pushed him away unsatisfactorily. Until now, he was still not telling her about the hospital matter, and he still dared to kiss her. She wiped her mouth forcefully in front of him. Of course she has. Did you think that everyone would be as off the book as you? She turned away, not knowing that her lips were already scrunched up and it made her look extremely angry. Aaron narrowed his eyes and looked at her quizzically. What's wrong? Nothing. Rachel walked quickly towards the bedroom, holding the railing as she went up the stairs. Aaron panicked. He passed his coat to the maids and then followed after her. Rachel, what are you doing? The maids looked at each other in puzzlement. What was going on? Was Madame throwing a tantrum? But why? Aaron wanted to enter the room, but just before he could, Rachel locked the door. Aaron held the doorknob, but realized that Rachel already locked it from the inside. Aaron frowned. Rachel, what exactly are you doing? Rachel grunted inside. I'm not feeling well today. I want to sleep alone. What? Aaron remembered that the last time she was like this was because she was brooding. Aaron stood firm. He knocked on the door. Rachel, what exactly is going on? Tell me. Don't you know what you did? Why do you need to ask me? Huh. He deserved this lesson. He didn't even realize his mistake. Aaron did not know what he did wrong. Everything seemed okay before he went to S-City, but now she was so different when he came back. That was not normal. Aaron leaned against the door. Are you asking me to guess? Rachel! He stared at the door for a while and gritted his teeth. He looked behind at Prince, who was looking up at him and watching the whole situation curiously. Aaron scoffed and narrowed his eyes. He grabbed the dog and said to Rachel, Are you going to open the door or not? I'm not opening the door! He must have really been too lenient on her. Just a small problem and she barred him from going in? Fine, fine. You're not coming out, are you? If you don't come out, I will strangle your dog to death right now. You! Rachel did not believe that Aaron would do such a thing. However, Aaron's voice really did sound angry. What if he really strangled Prince in his anger? He always hated Prince. The more Rachel thought, the more worried she got. Aaron waited outside for a long time, but there was no sound from Rachel. Was she really so furious that she didn't even care about Prince? Just as Aaron wanted to put Prince down, the door opened. Rachel looked out anxiously. She immediately saw Prince in Aaron's arms, and she quickly rushed to him. Aaron, you... 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 do you really want to strangle Prince? You're too cruel! Rachel quickly tried to snatch Prince back. Aaron saw this and took Prince away. Tell me what happened first. Otherwise, don't think about having this rotten dog. No! Give me the dog! Ha! <laughs> no! Come and try me. If he falls in the middle, don't you regret it? Aaron straightened his body and walked away. Rachel chased after him. Aaron, you're so despicable. A great man has to be ruthless. Haven't you heard of that? The maids were even more puzzled. 
They watched Aaron running away with the dog in his arms while Madam was chasing after him for the dog. What was going on now? Aaron asked, Are you telling me or not? Huh, Aaron! You only know how to bully me. If you have the guts, go bully other people. You bully me and now you're bullying my prince! Aaron asked, What? Whether I have the guts or not, don't you know best? However, I have the guts, but I only want to bully you and nobody else. Why did this bullying feel strange? Rachel froze, but quickly remembered that she was settling scores with him right now. She should not succumb to his sweet words. This man was so bad. This time she was absolutely not letting him off easily. You... Just give Prince back to me. We can try. Are you telling me or not? If you don't say it, I'll immediately do it. Do you really want to take the risk? <laughs> Aaron, you... If you dare to touch Prince, I'll fight it out with you. <laughs> I do want to see how you're going to fight me. Rachel tried to snatch Prince back. Aaron quickly grabbed Prince and held him in the air as if he was going to toss him. Rachel fumed. Although she believed that Aaron probably wouldn't do it, she was still angry. You, 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 Aaron! Just you wait! Say it! Or are you not going to? Aaron frowned at her. Rachel exclaimed angrily, Okay, okay! I'll say it! I'll say it! Aaron, you're shameless! You went to the hospital with Melissa, didn't you? You went to a woman's hospital. Aaron frowned. How do you know about that? Rachel said. Just tell me whether you went or not. Yes, of course he did. Aaron didn't expect her to know. Melissa was just kicking up a fuss that time, so he also couldn't be bothered to mention it. He thought that Rachel wouldn't know. Who would have thought that she would find out about this? Rachel looked at his expression and confirmed that it did happen. She knew that it was the truth, but with his silent admittance, she was extremely angry. She yelled, huh, Just you wait! Then she took Prince and walked away. Rachel, come back here! Aaron called out. If you lock the bedroom again, I can still enter. Rachel said, Fine, fine, you can enter. I know, so I won't use the bedroom. You can stay in there. What? Rachel opened the door and walked out with Prince in her arms. Hey, Rachel! Aaron stood at the door. You come back here! Rachel kept to her word and she drove off without knowing where to go. To a bee's place? That was too close by. Aaron would definitely find her in a jiffy. To work? There was no vacancy there. There were only single rooms that were already filled. And bringing a dog with her wasn't a good idea. Rachel went to a bustling area near the mall and was prepared to stay at a hotel. She went into an ordinary hotel with Prince. She asked the front desk, Miss, do you have any rooms? The front desk lady looked at the dog in her arms. Sorry, our hotel doesn't allow dogs to stay in here. Huh? I... I'm just homeless now and want to find a temporary place. I won't stay for very long. Episode 667 A Pitiful Thing Picked Up the front desk lady said, I'm sorry, this is our hotel policy. Just then, someone called out from behind. Wow, it's Rachel! Quick, look! Isn't that Rachel? Rachel was discovered. Some fans started running towards her. Rachel, Rachel! Rachel, can I get a photo with you? Can I have your autograph? Wow, is this your pet dog? Rachel smiled at everyone and said, Sorry, sorry, I have an emergency to tend to today. Prince was still in her arms. She couldn't casually leave him anywhere, and he could not be squeezed. 
She carried the dog and spoke apologetically. However, the fans around her were already screaming so loudly that they couldn't hear her. This invited more and more attention. Rachel tried to squeeze her way out as best she could. It was her first time being in such a situation, and she didn't really know how to leave this place. However, at this moment, a car suddenly stopped at the entrance. Rachel? Rachel froze and saw the car window wind down to reveal a man wearing sunglasses. It was Blake. Rachel said, Blake, you... Come, get in. Rachel quickly nodded and went in the car. Thanks to Blake's sudden appearance, Rachel finally shook off the horde coming at her just now and quickly left the place. She turned back to look at the crowd who was still calling out her name. Rachel heaved a sigh of relief and looked at Prince. She said, What a relief! Blake smiled as he drove. He looked at Rachel through the mirror. What happened? Why aren't your bodyguards with you? Rachel smiled sheepishly. I... There's a little problem between Aaron and me. A problem? Blake was curious as he looked at Rachel. He asked in surprise, By a problem? Do you mean you guys fought? Well... It must be. Oh my, I understand. You must have just quarreled and you wanted to stay at a hotel. Then you were discovered and got surrounded, right? Rachel scratched her head. How did you guess? Of course. Anna pulls a stunt like this every once in a while. She would leave the house after a fight. I know this tactic all too well. Okay, but how did you know I was here? I was eating nearby, and when I came here, I heard a lot of people calling you and running over here. Thus, I came over to take a look, too, and I saw that you were surrounded. Luckily, you came. Thank you. It's all right. But where do you want to go now? Rachel caressed Prince's white fur. I'll find a hotel to stay at. Blake looked at Rachel for a while and then said, What hotel? It's too dangerous for you to stay by yourself in a hotel. Furthermore, you're a public figure, so it's even more dangerous. Why don't you come to my place? Huh? Your place? That's not such a good idea. It's okay. Our home may not be as big as the Nixon household, but we still have a lot of empty rooms. Furthermore, my father likes you a lot. He'll be very happy if you become our guest. Anna has been at home a lot lately, too, and you can chat with her. Isn't it so much better than staying outside? But, on one hand, Rachel didn't want to trouble him too much. On the other hand, she felt that if Aaron looked her up at the Cooper household, Blake wouldn't just hand her over like that, would he? Blake seemed to understand her concerns just by looking at her face. He said, Don't worry. If Aaron comes, I'll teach him a lesson on your behalf. Blake raised a brow as he held the steering wheel and said, Hey, he's always the one trying to teach me a lesson. This time it's finally my turn. Blake chuckled. So rest assured, I definitely won't hand you over to Aaron so easily. It's not every day that I get such an opportunity. I'll make him admit to his mistake on your behalf. Oh, right. You didn't tell me why are you so angry? Thinking about it now, Rachel felt embarrassed to say it. She pursed her lips and thought, this was just a small matter. If she said it out loud, she would definitely be laughed at. Blake asked, Is it not convenient to say? No, it's just a small matter, Rachel blushed. Blake laughed and said, A small matter? I'm most experienced at this. Just look at Anna and me. How many times have we quarreled over small matters? We've quarreled about every possible small matter, and I can understand that. If two people don't get along, the issue doesn't matter. What matters is your emotions. 
If you want to argue, one would definitely argue no matter what it is about. Isn't that right? Rachel thought about it. He really did make sense. Rachel indeed did not argue with Aaron solely because of this matter. It was probably because of stress or some other major causes. Ever since that problem with Melissa, she always wanted to trust Aaron and did not want any outsiders to affect their relationship. Thus, she never vented her own emotions. She had always been an expressive person, but she suppressed her emotions this time. Thus, it led to a little tantrum. She vented it on the wrong matter this time. She simply wanted to pick a fight with Aaron. Rachel thought about it and told Blake in simple terms. Aaron did not like Blake because of Anna. However, Rachel thought that Blake was still a very good person and he was trustworthy. Blake heard this and immediately hit the steering wheel. He said, how ridiculous. I'll definitely teach him a lesson for you. How can he take the chance that you're overseas to take Melissa to the hospital? Even if there must have been a reason, he should have told you honestly. Seriously, how could he hide a thing like this from you? You did the right thing. Just wait for him to come here. I'll definitely give him a good lashing. Rachel pouted. She didn't see him come out to find her when she left. Who knew what he was doing? Rachel arrived at the Cooper household. Blake instructed the maid to prepare a room for her. Andy Cooper was quickly informed of Rachel's arrival. He quickly had the kitchen cook up a good meal and told Rachel to join them. At the dining table, Andy looked at Rachel and said happily, It's great that you can stay here for a while. Stay longer. Stay as long as you want. Tell us what you need. Anna very soon came over. She looked at Rachel. I heard it all from Blake. What happened to you guys? Why are you also starting to fight now? How can my brother bear to fight you? Well... Blake interrupted her and said, What? Your brother can't argue too? All men are the same and your brother is no exception. What did you think? Anna glared at him. You and your excuses. My brother is not like you at all. Rachel laughed sheepishly and said, All right, Blake. You think everybody is like you. He instructed the attendants to pick more food for Rachel as he said, Don't mind them. Eat some more. Rachel smiled and said, Thank you, Uncle Cooper. Episode 668 the three of them. On the other side, Aaron already had someone follow after Rachel. He heard that Rachel first went to a hotel. After that, Blake took her away. He immediately called Blake. Blake knew that he would call. He intentionally asked over the phone, What brings the big CEO Nixon to call me on all his own accord? Enough of your nonsense. Bring her back to me. Aaron said unceremoniously. Oh my! Send her back to you? On what basis? You bullied her and even prevented her from leaving home. If you want her back, come and get her yourself. I'm not sending her to you. Blake, I'm giving you one more chance. Bring her back to me. Aaron's voice lowered. Blake chuckled lowly. He imagined that Aaron definitely looked very funny now. I said I'm not bringing her to you. What's wrong? I'm standing on the logical side. It's all your fault for not cutting clean with your ex-girlfriend. You even accompanied your ex-girlfriend to the hospital behind your wife's back. You are seeking death. At this point, I should give you some words to show how I feel right now, Blake said. He felt so happy that both his feet were propped up. You deserve it. Aaron really wanted to beat him up. However, Blake hung up and laughed at his phone. Then he called out to check on Rachel. Rachel was on the phone with a bee. 
She told Abi that she was not at the Nixon household for the time being and was staying somewhere else. Abi didn't say anything. She only said, See you at work tomorrow. Aaron called after that, but Rachel did not pick it up. Blake watched and said to her, He must be going crazy at home right now. Ignore him. Men need to be ignored once in a while. Rachel thought that Blake was a little sadistic. Blake said, You didn't bring anything with you. Anna said that she'll take you out shopping later to buy some clothes. Rachel asked, Isn't Anna busy? Blake said, Since you're here, what can she be busy with? Go tidy up and I'll drive you guys out. Rachel nodded. When they went out, Anna already packed up. She looked at Rachel and said, Rachel, let's go. You still hold bigger importance. If I ask Blake to be my chauffeur, he will refuse at all costs. Now that you're here, he immediately volunteered. Blake said, But of course, you have so many chauffeurs. Why would you need me? Rachel is our guest of honor now, so of course, I will provide my service for her. Furthermore, she's an important hostage related to your second brother. It's up to her if I can see Aaron go crazy or not. Are you able to hold such an important position? Will your brother ever look at you? Seriously. Why did Rachel feel as if she had been tricked by him? It sounded as if she was abducted. However, this was the first time she saw a kidnapper getting so happy only because he could make his target go mad. Rachel said, If you're taking me as a hostage, can you please be more discreet and talk about this behind my back? Respect your hostage's feelings. <laughs> There's no need to. Isn't this a win-win situation? You're just like me and you want to teach Aaron a good lesson too. Isn't that right? All right. Rachel knew that he also loved to joke around. Anna couldn't be bothered with this childish man. She said to Rachel, Come on. Blake will pay for everything today, so we should shop until we drop. At the mall, Blake followed behind them. He watched speechlessly as the two women in front linked arms and began shopping. Rachel finally understood the true meaning of shop till you drop. Anna's spending power did not lose out to her second brother at all. In every shop, she bought everything that she saw and liked. She never considered if she truly liked the item. As long as she had her eyes on something, she would ask for it to be packed. Behind them, Blake took out his card to pay. He paid so much that his hands felt like jelly and he asked speechlessly, Are you guys tired? We've been to so many places. Anna asked, You're already tired? This is only the second mall. Blake said, the second one? You still have the cheek to say that? Do you want to see the record we walked on my phone? We've walked 20,000 steps already. Do you know how many kilometers that is? Anna said, That many? Sister-in-law, are you tired? Me? I'm okay, Rachel replied. Shopping was different from usual. Normally, if she really walked this much, she would indeed feel tired. However, shopping didn't make her feel tired. Anna turned to look back at Blake. You're too weak. Blake was really dying. The clothes are all the same. Can't you just buy some stuff and go off? Let's find something to eat. I can't take it anymore. My legs are going to break off. Anna sighed. Ah, that's too bad. We can see a man's fitness just from this aspect. Hey, you... Anna said, come on. We have indeed bought enough clothes for a few days. She thought for a while and then said to Blake, Take the clothes back to the car first. I'll shop a little more. You don't have to follow us. Blake couldn't be happier. Okay, I'll wait for you guys in the car. Hurry up. Don't shop so much. 
Anna said, <laughs> The annoying one is gone. Let's go buy our stuff. Rachel asked, What else are we buying? Anna replied, Lingerie. You have to buy a few sets to change about. Seeing as you came out with nothing, you're way too inexperienced. Remember this the next time. You can leave everything else behind, but you must bring a box of underwear with you. Otherwise, buying new ones won't feel as comfortable as your old ones. Everything else can be new, but when it comes to underwear, it is really more comfortable after wearing them a few times. Rachel speechlessly thought that she was really too experienced. They casually walked into a lingerie shop. All kinds of lingerie were displayed that it looked dazzling. The staff saw them enter and quickly welcomed them. Anna said, Wow, this is gorgeous. If you wear this, you'll definitely make noses bleed. Rachel looked down. What? It was so translucent. I don't want it. You're joking. Do you think I'm joking here? If you wear this in front of my brother, he'll definitely regret and cry. He would question himself for fighting you for no reason and immediately kneel down to beg for your mercy. After that, he'll grovel at your feet. Hey, hey, hey. Don't talk blindly. I'm not wearing that. I don't care. I'm buying this for you. Take it as a gift from me. Hey, there's really no need to. I don't want it. I will not take no for an answer. I've already bought it. How can you bear to reject me? You must wear it. Anna went to settle the bill. Rachel tried to stop her. The two of them bickered playfully until she reached the cashier. The staff did not say anything and let the two of them continue. Naturally, the staff didn't bother about them making so much noise, since they were casually spending hundreds of thousands at their store. Episode 669 the restaurant. The retail assistant said good-naturedly, Miss, you can just try it on. The material isn't that translucent when you wear it. Our cotton is also very comfortable. Even if you wear it for yourself, it's also very comfortable. Rachel protested, No, no, she did not want it. However, her protests were ignored. Anna had already paid for it directly. Rachel continued to complain even after they left. Since you bought it, you'll be the one to wear it. Whatever happens, I won't wear it. No way, no way. This is sister-in-law's size. My cup size is not as big as Rachel's. I definitely won't be able to pull this off. Nonsense. Stop talking. I definitely won't wear it no matter what. Don't be like this. It's a display of my sincerity. Once they arrived outside, they stopped discussing the matter as Blake was around. Blake had waited for a long time for the two of them to come out. He clutched his stomach and complained that he was hungry. So the three of them went to a nearby restaurant to eat. My brother brought you to this restaurant before, right? Rachel looked around. Indeed, he had brought her here before. It was a Chinese restaurant and he had booked a private room for them. She had also met Melissa here before and had even been insulted by her. Therefore, she did not come here often after that incident. Because Melissa had once misunderstood that the room had been reserved for her... Aaron thought that Rachel would feel uncomfortable. In actual fact, Rachel thought nothing of it. But it was the first thing that came to her mind when she came in. Anna said, I often come to this room. <laughs> My brother forgot about it after reserving it. I'm still putting the tabs on his account now. I've actually spent a lot of his money eating here. Hurting each other like this. Were they really biological siblings? But for a family like theirs, money was no longer the most important thing. Thus, they did not think much of spending each other's money. In any case, they
they had a lot of money, so such a thing was just a drop in the bucket. The three of them went to the room that Aaron had booked again. Anna ordered enough dishes to cover the entire table. Blake said, I really... The two of you can really walk a lot. Don't your calves hurt? Anna replied, You have such bad stamina. Your calves hurt just because of this? <sighs> You're really fantastic. Rachel smiled while looking at the two of them. She felt that the fact that the two of them were childhood friends and were equal in social status was actually a very blissful thing as well. But they themselves probably did not think so. Rachel left the room to the couple who were about to start arguing so that she could get some air. However, the moment she left, she bumped into Melissa again. She was truly, especially attached to this place. Melissa saw Rachel come out from the private room and asked in surprise, Are you and Aaron here to eat? Rachel immediately saw her large belly. It was looking more and more obvious. She herself strut around carelessly without any thought of hiding her stomach. It even seemed as if she would like to have her stomach protrude more. Rachel looked at her. No, I'm not with him. Melissa paused before remembering. Ah, right. This is the private room under Aaron's name. Just put it on her tab. Just then, a few women chattering noisily came up behind Melissa. All of them were Melissa's good friends. Upon seeing Rachel, they all froze. At first, they were slightly worried to have actually bumped into Aaron's wife when they were here to eat with Melissa. However, they suddenly remembered that Melissa was now pregnant with his child. So what if she was his wife? Their initial guilt upon seeing Rachel immediately turned into arrogance. They looked at Rachel disdainfully. Rachel said to Melissa, Ah, what a small world. Melissa smiled and looked at Rachel. I know that you're doing what I did back then. You're taking advantage of the fact that Aaron booked a room here and casually brought your poor friends for a meal here, right? But you must not spend too much money or Aaron will be unhappy. Even though you have no money and you're using Aaron's money for everything, you should save when you can, right? After bumping into Aaron here that one time, Melissa could not invite her friends here from then on. In actual fact, she had not been here for a long time. One reason for this was that this place was very expensive. But the main reason was that the last time she came here, the boss had told her right in front of her friends that Aaron had instructed him not to put her tab on Aaron's account. It had immediately caused her extreme embarrassment. Therefore, she did not want to come again after that. However, she still came here this time under pressure from her friends. Rachel thought to herself, she was definitely not like Melissa. She had never brought her friends here. This time, it was also Anna who had brought her here. She said, Thank you for the reminder, but I'm his wife. I think I'm different from you. So she was saying that she had the right to spend Aaron's money? It really angered Melissa, especially when Rachel had said this in front of her friends. Rachel, what do you mean that you're different from me? You're definitely the same. Otherwise, why would you stick through thick and thin with Aaron even when I'm pregnant? Why do I find it hard to believe? The truth must be that you don't care about it because you think that it's already good enough that you could actually claim a connection with Aaron. Rachel smiled and looked at her. Think however you want. Melissa continued, Now that I sent you a photo of Aaron accompanying me to the hospital, you didn't show any reaction either. But your way of thinking is actually not wrong. Without Aaron, what are you? The fact that you can accept my child also goes to show that we can get along well too. It's 
fine as long as we pretend that the other doesn't exist. Don't you think so? It was perhaps common for many people to do this in upper society. But Rachel definitely would not, and she could not accept it either. She said, you're wrong. The only reason I'm ignoring you is because I believe in Aaron. Ha! If that were true, why would you be having an argument with Aaron right now? Rachel froze. How did she know about Rachel's fight with Aaron? Melissa said, There's no use in thinking. There's no such thing as a secret in this circle. Many people know that you ran away from home today. I thought that Aaron had already cajoled you so quickly. But looking at the situation now, he probably hasn't. I know that you're very angry, but it's a fact that Aaron accompanied me to the hospital. Even if the child wasn't his, why would he accompany me to the hospital? How did he explain it to you? Did he lie to you and say that he accompanied me for an abortion? In that case, you shouldn't believe a word of it. How could I possibly abort our child? Melissa did not know what Aaron had told Rachel, so she intentionally worded things in this way. Rachel was speechless. At the moment, she could not retaliate. She had been feeling this way for some time, so she was more or less on edge for the time being. Even though she truly believed Aaron, she was also very irritated that people were constantly speculating. Seeing that Rachel remained silent, Melissa sneered and asked, Right now, do you come here to take advantage of Aaron since you ran away from home and have no money to eat? Seriously, in the end, you're still using Aaron. So you really can't live without Aaron, right? Episode 670 She shouted loudly. The woman beside her quickly said, All right, Melissa. She's not in our circle anyway. She's of poor origins, so she definitely doesn't have money. Whose money would she spend if not Aaron's? Now that she ran away from home, she can't turn back again. She must be regretting it terribly. Why don't we treat her to a meal? Seeing as Aaron hasn't come to look for her even now, it's likely that he's already irritated. He's already sick of her and doesn't want to seek her out anymore. After all, now that he even has a child with you and the two of you have been together for so long, he's ignoring Rachel too for the sake of his child and his heir. In that case, Rachel, that's all the more that you shouldn't make a fuss right now. The more you kick up a fuss, the more he will dislike you. You even dare to run away from home. Aren't you afraid that you won't be able to return? Everyone looked at Rachel with contempt. They felt that Rachel was truly pitiful now that Melissa's belly was so huge. Melissa was currently looking at Rachel somewhat arrogantly. However, just then, Anna and Blake rushed out from inside after being informed by a waiter. Anna and Blake appeared all of a sudden and looked at Rachel and Melissa. Then Blake immediately walked towards them. What's going on? What happened? Anna joined in. Hey, why is she here? Melissa's eyes went blank as she looked at the two of them come up behind Rachel. Her heart seized up when she saw Blake. He had given her the chills the last time. Today, she still had lingering fears. Furthermore, Anna was also here this time. Why had they come here with Rachel to eat? Rachel immediately saw that the girls behind Melissa seemed to be very scared of Blake. They had already gone pale. She smiled and said, Don't worry. The two of them probably have a lot of experience dealing with mistresses. I wonder if it's because they've been mistresses for many years, or because they've been cheated on for many years, and often meet other mistresses. Anyway, they were sharing their experience with me and giving me advice on how to get along well with a mistress and how to seize my husband's heart again. It's a pity.
pity that I don't need it. The two of them turned red from anger upon hearing the sarcasm in her words. But when they looked at the three of them, they immediately gave up and did not dare to criticize Rachel. Standing at the back was Blake, whose reputation was so bad. They definitely did not want to be implicated. Anna nearly laughed out loud upon hearing Rachel's words. She also looked at Melissa's big belly. It's also my first time seeing a mistress being so proud of that fact. What's more, this mistress insists on giving herself a high rank. My brother has already said so many times that he doesn't know where the child came from because he could not have touched you at all. You should know better than anyone whether or not he could have touched you, yet you strut around with your large belly. Is it really good for you to behave like this? Do you not feel ashamed? Does your family not feel ashamed of you at all? You! Melissa looked at Anna. Anna, I know that you never liked me since we were young, but I'm sure you know that your brother and I were in a relationship for many years. Right now, I'm taking back what belongs to me. Why should I feel ashamed? Relationship? You call that a relationship? Anna continued. That was your own wishful thinking. If all one-sided feelings had to be returned, wouldn't this world be in a mess? At this moment, Blake held Anna back. Enough! Why are you wasting your breath on her? Where's the manager here? The manager rushed here from the other end. Blake asked, What kind of shop is this? Do you take just anyone as a customer? Get this person out of here. The manager froze and looked at Melissa's big belly. Of course he did not dare to. That was Aaron's child. Blake sensed the manager's hesitation and his eyes turned harsh. Why? Did you not hear what I said? I young Master Cooper, this, this, our shop is just a small business. You... One meal costs hundreds of thousands, but you call it a small business? Do you still want to operate? Oh, so you think that I don't have any right to speak? Are you going to offend me and stand on this mistress's side? Fine, then. You can forget about running such an unethical business. No, no. It's just that she's a pregnant woman. We're afraid something will go wrong, the manager said hastily. Immediately, Melissa pushed her stomach out even more. You dare touch me? Blake, you can forget about living a good life if anything happens to my child. The two girls behind her were already scared into silence. They merely looked up at Blake, anticipating his reaction. They thought that Blake probably did not have the guts to treat Melissa harshly, since this was a public place. However, Blake was obviously not as easy to get rid of as they thought. Blake said directly, Manager, get them out of here. You won't be responsible for what happens to them, no matter what happens. I'll be responsible for it. But if she remains here, this restaurant of yours? His cold eyes shifted from Melissa to the manager. You can forget about running this restaurant. A shiver went through the manager's body. He looked at Blake and still seemed to be unable to accept this. Blake said, I know that my reputation in the city has never been great, but now I'm telling you that the rumors about me are all true. I'm precisely like that, and if you oppose me, I will do everything I can to make sure you stay out of my sight. The manager immediately felt even more frightened. He weighed his options and quickly thought to himself, Blake was typically a stubborn person. If anyone offended him, especially in this sense, he would not let that person off. He would use every method to crush his opponent. He was simply the devil incarnate. No one could do anything about him. In the end, the manager could only look at Melissa silently. 
Melissa's eyes instantly widened. No! No way! You can't treat me like this! You can't! However, Blake stood tall, with his hands behind his back, with an expression of uncompromising decisiveness. The manager gestured for someone to escort Melissa out. In comparison, Blake was more frightening. Melissa shouted angrily as she was being pulled outside. Blake! Rachel, just you wait! Just you wait! Her friends were also looking on. They wanted to help Melissa up, but did not dare to. What were they supposed to do now? They did not expect that Blake and Anna had come here with Rachel. Before this, they had even heard that Rachel had been chased out of the house because of an argument with Aaron. But in the end, Rachel was here for a meal with Aaron's younger sister and her brother-in-law. She did not look pathetic at all. It was obvious that they were all in this together as a family. Melissa shouted after being chased out. Seeing that the people around her were looking at her curiously, her complexion turned pale and her eyes moved. Her stomach suddenly hurt a little, and she sat firmly on the ground while shouting, I can't go on! Doctor! Call a doctor for me, quick! My stomach! My child! Episode 671, Teaching Him a Lesson In no time, Melissa was sent to the hospital. Her friends followed her to the hospital. Melissa held her stomach while she huffed and puffed in anger. Standing next to her on both sides, they said, Melissa, we couldn't do anything either. We wanted to help you back then, but I'm sure you know how terrifying Blake is. He's always been very extreme. We definitely can't win against him, so we... Forget it. It's all right. Although Melissa felt that they were not true friends, she decided to let it go after thinking about it. If she were standing in their shoes, she would have not dared to speak recklessly either. Nevertheless, Melissa still clutched her bed furiously. When she saw her father rushing towards her, she called out to him, Father! Rachel was too much! Look! She chased me out, just like that! My poor belly. If my child is hurt, even a little, I won't let her off. I won't let her off. Melissa's father quickly called for someone to examine her. In the end, the diagnosis was indeed true that her condition had turned unstable because of her turbulent emotions. They gave her an injection of... and told her to rest. Because she had gotten pregnant through in vitro fertilization, it was very easy for her to have a miscarriage during this term. It was best for Melissa to remain in bed and rest for the time being. Hearing this, Melissa blamed this on Rachel. Her father said, All right, don't be so anxious. I'll give Aaron a call. How can he let Rachel do this? It's too much for her to treat a pregnant woman like this. How exactly did he take a liking to her? Anna walked out with Rachel. While walking, she said, Rachel, I realize that you're really quite good at using sarcasm against people. Huh? What you said about them being mistresses. Dear me, it was such a classic. Anna tugged at Rachel. You've really learned how to be vicious with your words after being together with my brother. You don't even need vulgarities to criticize others. You're really something. Blake said, That's enough. I went to check and it seems that Aaron is at our house. Let's not go home first. Anna asked, Why? Brother must have gone there to look for Rachel. What do you know? It wouldn't be good for us to kick up a fuss at home since my father is at home. It's better to stay outside. We can kick up as much of a fuss as we want and no one will care. <laughs> we'll stay outside and wait for Aaron to come here. When the time comes, I'll see how Aaron grovels and begs for forgiveness. No way. 
He had covered all bases just to make Aaron suffer. Having said this, Blake actually brought Rachel and Anna to a bar. They ordered some snacks and drinks at the bar. Anna wanted to drink alcohol here, too, but Blake stopped her. He immediately snatched the menu from her and said, Your temperament when you're drunk is so bad and you still want a drink? Just get some orange juice. What? I don't want that. I want sparkling water. Anna snatched the menu back and continued ordering. She also ordered sparkling water for Rachel. From one of the booths, someone saw Rachel and mumbled, Is that Rachel? I think it is. However, they noticed Blake's gaze just when they were about to come over. Immediately, they were terrified by Blake and shifted their gazes. Blake pulled down the front of his shirt with both hands so that it straightened out. Then he looked up, only to see that Aaron was actually here. Hey, you came so quickly. Rachel still had water in her mouth. She nearly spit the water out when she heard Blake's words. She turned around to see Aaron enter gracefully, his expression as cold as frost. He saw the three of them and walked towards them swiftly. Rachel instinctively wanted to stand up. Since he had come to look for her, she unknowingly felt slightly guilty as she looked into his calm eyes. She felt as if she had somehow been exposed. However, after thinking about it carefully, she did not think that she had done anything wrong. She ran away from home because Aaron had been in the wrong. She had nothing to be afraid of. It must have been Aaron's overwhelming presence that inevitably invoked guilt in anyone he stared at. Aaron approached them and immediately glanced at Blake and then at Rachel. Then he abruptly grabbed Rachel's hand. Come home with me, he said. Rachel looked up and was astonished to find that he had seized her hand. However, in the next moment, Blake pulled Aaron's hand away. Hey, Aaron, what are you doing? You're taking someone away from me the moment you arrive. Don't you respect me at all? Aaron looked at Blake. What are you doing? I'm going to take my wife home. Do I even need to get your approval and show you respect? Of course you do. Right now, Rachel is an important guest at my house. Since she's staying at my house, I must take responsibility for her safety. Blake crossed his arms over his chest. His righteous manner was extremely annoying. Aaron looked like he could not be bothered with him. He looked at Rachel and asked, are you going to come back with me? Blake immediately came between them. Why, are you threatening, Rachel? For a moment, Aaron truly wanted to punch Blake's irritating face. Move aside. Blake, what are you doing? Do you want to fight me? Blake raised his eyebrows. If you insist on starting a fight, I can only fight to the end. After you've treated Rachel this way, how can I let you casually take her away? I... Aaron's brow was furrowed deeply. He defended himself lowly. What did I do to Rachel? Blake said, What do you think? Of course, you bullied her. You two-timed her and even lied for no reason. You even tried to defend yourself when you got caught red-handed. Aaron's breath got stuck in his throat. He truly felt that Blake was becoming more and more unlikable. He looked at Rachel behind him. She was pursing her lips while looking at the ground. She also looked angry. Aaron could only say, Rachel, I accompanied Melissa to the hospital only because she said that she was going to abort the child. Rachel's eyes flashed as she looked up. Melissa also said earlier today that you would definitely say that you accompanied her to get an abortion. She was right. Does Melissa understand you that well? Aaron asked. Did she say that? 
You saw her today? Yes, at that restaurant the two of you often went to in the past. Aaron held his forehead. He still wanted to speak, but was interrupted by Blake again. That's enough. In any case, it's too late for you to explain it now. It would have been honest of you to explain it when it happened. But if you're only doing it now, you're just making excuses. Right, Rachel? Blake nudged Rachel by the shoulder. Rachel nodded. That's right. That's right. For a moment, Aaron was in disbelief. You guys, Blake said. Thus, now that you're already in the wrong, Rachel can't go home with you. Aaron looked at Rachel. Are you really on his side? Seeing that Aaron was alone in this, Rachel's heart softened a little. But she did think that he needed to be taught a lesson. So she hardened her stance again. Episode 672, At the Cooper Residence. If she did not teach him a lesson, he would only continue bullying her. Hmm. I'm still a guest at the Cooper Residence. I, I don't want to go back yet. Aaron's face crumbled. Blake immediately raised his eyebrows and asked, You heard what Rachel said, right? Aaron stared at Blake. Can you go elsewhere to cause trouble if you have nothing better to do? Blake asked. Why do I have to go elsewhere? It was definitely his first time seeing the great President Nixon in such a difficult position. Why would he cause trouble elsewhere if he could do it here? Was he crazy? Blake looked at Aaron as if he was here to watch a show. It was even more irritating. Seeing his attitude, Aaron clenched his teeth and suppressed his anger so that he would not lose his composure out of anger. He tried his best to pretend that Blake did not exist and said directly to Rachel, Rachel, come home with me. We'll talk about this again once we're home. I have other things to discuss with you too. I said that I don't want to. I want to stay longer at the Cooper residence. You... Aaron glanced at Blake. He knew that he could forget about taking Rachel away as long as Blake was here. They would definitely not come to an agreement if he was here stirring up a row. He had to take Rachel out first. It would be easier for him to discuss this with her if they were alone. Thus, while Blake was putting on airs, Aaron suddenly reached past Blake and grabbed Rachel directly. Blake clearly had not expected this either. When Aaron had already walked past them, he instinctively cursed. What the? Aaron, are you really going to take her away from me? After speaking, he immediately darted towards Aaron and hugged him from behind. Rachel was stunned. What was he doing? Aaron was swiftly pulled backward when Blake hugged him by the waist. Aaron clenched his teeth and wanted to shrug off Blake's arms. However, it was difficult for Aaron to exert force as he was behind him. He could only call out Blake's name with a displeased expression. Blake, you better let go of me. How dare you take her away? You want to take Rachel away without giving me anything in return. That's impossible. Blake was already panting from hugging such a huge man and being shaken sideways by him. However, he still refused to let go. Unfortunately, the two of them were very strong. Both of them exercised regularly as well, so their stamina was great. They really seemed to be evenly matched, and even more so when neither was willing to admit defeat. Aaron looked at the security guard who was looking at them from outside in surprise. Then he immediately said, Get this person out of here. Blake turned around, glanced at the guard, and hastily responded, 
get me out of here. If you dare to come here, I'll destroy your bar. Go ahead. Let him destroy it. Whatever he breaks, I'll pay twice the cost. Ha! Huh. I'll see who dares to come here. If he's paying, I'll break even more things. He has so much money anyway, he'll be able to pay for it. I have enough energy, too. I'm not afraid of breaking everything. It's just that you probably won't be able to continue running this business of yours. The staff immediately looked at one another. This... what were they supposed to do about this? They took a closer look and saw that one was Aaron, and the other was Blake. One was the older brother, and the other was his brother-in-law. Why were they even fighting? Were they really about to start a fight, or were they just playing around? If they were just playing around, the staff definitely did not dare to disturb them recklessly. If they were really going to start a fight, all the more the staff would not dare to get involved. However, the two of them attracted the attention of all the people in the restaurant in no time because their actions were still too aggressive, even though they did not really look like they were angry. Rachel looked at the two of them wrapped around each other and swayed unsteadily from side to side. Then she looked at the expressions of the people around them. She really felt like she was going to die from embarrassment. How childish could they be? Anna could no longer tolerate it, too. She watched as the two of them were deadlocked. Then she crossed her arms and asked, Hey, are you guys done fighting? Each of you should give in a little and see if you can reach a compromise. If not, let's go back and look for a place for you to fight. Don't put on a performance in public, all right? Rachel quickly frowned and yelled, Aaron, you... Are you really going to cause trouble here? Stop fighting, all right? Of course, Aaron and Blake completely ignored everyone else. Aaron focused all his attention on pushing Blake's hand away, while Blake squeezed Aaron with all his might. The two of them fell onto the ground in no time. Everyone started yelling as they moved backward. As they looked at the two of them flushed with anger, they could not help but suspect that the two of them were actually fighting. One belonged to the Nixon family, and the other belonged to the Cooper family. If they fought, it would cause such a stir in the nation in the future. However, although the two people fighting were very immature... They did not look that pathetic. Ultimately, handsome men were handsome. They still looked very handsome, even when they were rolling on the ground. Just then, Aaron pulled Blake to his feet. Blake continued to hug his waist, refusing to let go. There was nothing Aaron could do. He looked down at Blake, who was hanging on his waist. All right, all right. Stop messing around. He fell onto the couch soon after. Blake followed suit and fell onto the couch as well. Seeing that Aaron had already given up on grabbing Rachel, Blake observed for some time before letting go. Then he said, Good Lord, I'm dying of fatigue. Quick, bring me some beer. Cold beer, damn it. My damned sweat is about to drip down. Hearing this, the staff beside them instructed someone to get some cold beer. Aaron also took the chance to grab a beer and drank a mouthful of it. Rachel and Anna quickly walked towards them. They sat down across them and looked at them speechlessly. Rachel said, I really don't know if anything came out of that fight. Anna said, Something came out of it. Look, everyone around them is looking at them. Everyone will definitely know about this tomorrow. Indeed, everyone was still watching curiously. They saw the two of them fight for some time before sitting down again. They looked 
calm as they each started drinking beer on their own. The four of them looked extremely harmonious. The atmosphere was now completely different from the atmosphere earlier. The people around them immediately thought that city dwellers like them really knew how to have fun. They did not understand why these wealthy people were in the habit of fighting each other for no reason. Perhaps they played around like this only because they were very close to each other. Blake lay there, motionless. Aaron also seemed bored, sitting there. Blake said, I haven't exercised for such a long time. Seriously, I can't even win against you. Aaron scoffed and drank his beer in a show of contempt towards him. Blake chuckled. But you still can't bring Rachel back without my approval. Aaron raised his refined eyebrows. He looked completely calm as he said, In that case, I won't take her back then. Aaron stood up. Blake looked at him in shock. What are you going to do? Aaron straightened his clothes. Your house is so big, you can always make some space for me, right? Blake thought about it and realized that he wanted to move in. Hey, Aaron, what are you up to? Aaron broke into a smile. In a slightly conniving tone, he said, Ever since my sister got married to you, I haven't spent time with her for a long time. This time, I want to go to her place to stay for a while. I'm sure that's fine, right? When he was done speaking, Aaron glanced meaningfully at Rachel across him. One glance, and Rachel immediately felt like a gust of cold wind was attacking her. She constantly felt that Aaron was telling her, I won't let you off. Watch how I sort you out this time. Episode 673 Are you angry? Rachel turned around sheepishly. She nearly wanted to just follow after him, but Blake stopped her immediately. Don't be afraid of him. You have an older brother here to support you. Don't worry. This isn't his territory. This is your older brother's territory. I definitely won't let you lose out. Rachel immediately looked at Blake innocently. She would be relying entirely on him for the next few days. Very quickly... Blake drove the two of them back to the Cooper residence. Sure enough, after going in, they saw that bodyguards from the Nixon family were here. The maids came out from inside. Shocked, they said, Aaron came earlier and said that he was going to stay for a few days. Old Master instructed us to prepare a room for him. Right now, Aaron has gone to see Old Master. Blake said, Hey, everyone says that I'm shameless. I finally met someone even more shameless than me. Is there anyone as terrible as him? He even came to my house. Rachel could only shrug. She looked to the side with her heart frozen. For some reason, she felt that she would have a pretty hard time over the next few days. The moment she arrived at the Cooper residence, Rachel quickly retreated to her room. She did not dare to leave her room again the entire day. If Aaron caught her, she was definitely done for. She had caused Aaron to get into a fight with someone at a bar. Even thinking about it made her feel that death was near. Rachel whipped out her phone to check her WeChat. She discovered that people were actually discussing the incident. The comments were about how Aaron and Blake had just had a huge fight in a bar for all to see. No one had dared to break up the fight. Many people lamented, Is this for real? Did anyone take any photos? Why didn't you say so earlier? I didn't get to see it. What a pity. I would have gone to watch if I found out about it earlier. I go to that place very often. That's the bar Blake frequents. Further down below, Rachel even found a comment targeting her. It said that she had gotten into a fight with Aaron 
and that he had even chased her out of the house. According to the rumors, the neighbors had seen Rachel leaving the house without taking anything with her and immediately told other people about it. These people really liked to make up stories. That night, Rachel had still not left the room to eat anything. One of the maids knocked on her door and said, Madam Nixon, they're having a barbecue in the backyard. They asked you to go as well. The backyard? Yes, it's just around the corner. You'll know once you get there. Rachel had no choice but to go out. She looked around and saw no trace of Aaron. Then she asked softly, Where is Aaron? Mr. Nixon said that he had work to do and hasn't come back yet. Fantastic. Rachel stretched her leg out loosely and stretched her body. Then she followed the maid out. When they arrived outside, the maid said, Madam, this way, please. Rachel walked out of the courtyard and asked the maid, Did they go outside to have the barbecue? Yes, madam. The houses here are not that compact. They are very large, empty spaces, and there's an eco-park behind the house. This place is particularly spacious, so it's a very suitable venue for leisure. Master often holds barbecues here. All right. This place was located some distance away from the city area. As their father preferred a quiet atmosphere, he did not buy a house in the central district and instead chose to live in a place that was farther away. The good thing was that the air was really very good here. It lifted her spirits and seemed to make her feel at ease as well. Sure enough, when she looked into the distance, she saw a barbecue grill and a large lamp. Blake, Anna, and Aaron were all there. Rachel's body shriveled up the moment she saw Aaron. Didn't they say he wasn't around? However, Anna had already caught sight of Rachel. She called out to her and said, Come here, Rachel. You're too slow. Rachel had no choice but to go over. Aaron was sitting on a high chair with his legs propped up. He turned around to look at Rachel with misty eyes, filling her mind with delusional thoughts. Rachel quickly turned around. She found a seat furthest away from Aaron and hastily sat down. However, she did not expect Aaron to start inching closer towards her. Subsequently, he inched even closer upon seeing that Blake was so focused on manning the grill. By the time Rachel noticed, he had already inched his way into Rachel's danger zone. She whipped her head up and looked at Aaron. Aaron immediately said, Rachel, I'll apologize to you. I shouldn't have hidden it from you. But Melissa did tell me that she was going to get an abortion that day. It's just that in the end, it turned out that she was just fooling around, so I thought there was no need to tell you. Hearing this, Rachel looked up at him. You can explain all you want. I'm listening. But it's my choice whether or not to believe you. You, Rachel. Rachel turned away. Aaron kept staring at Rachel with his lips pursed. It was only after a long time that he turned around to say, Fine, Rachel. Don't regret this. Rachel scoffed, only to see Aaron look at her and stand up immediately. Then he walked into the distance. He seemed to be moving further and further away, and he slowly disappeared into the darkness. Rachel felt a little strange, and her heart slowly turned cold. She could not help but wonder if she had gone too far. She had simply been kicking up a fuss, but it seemed that she had made it too realistic. Anna looked up. Hey, where did my brother go? Rachel paused for some time before standing up and saying, I'll go and take a look. She instinctively stood up and walked out. She looked for him outside but did not see him. Her heart sank even further. Had he left out of anger? She looked closely at her surroundings again. 
all of a sudden, she saw Aaron's figure in the dark. He was standing there, all alone. Rachel hurried over. Aaron? She called out to him, but Aaron did not respond. Rachel frowned as she approached him. Are you angry? Think about it, Aaron. You got so angry just from hearing my words. Then I must have been so angry when Melissa said those things to me, right? She approached him from behind and reached out her arm to touch him. However, Aaron moved and immediately pushed her hand away. You... Rachel felt slightly hurt. She did not dare to touch him out of fear that he would push her away again. She crossed her arms in front of her and stood there watching him. All right. I know that you're angry. You're right. By running away from home like this, I'm humiliating you. I even caused you to get into a fight with someone at the bar and injured your reputation even further. But before Rachel finished speaking, she sensed a sudden light around her. Something was floating towards them. Initially, Rachel could not see clearly. Later, she suddenly realized that these specks which filled the air around her were actually fireflies. The fireflies were like an array of stars floating towards them one by one from the distance. In no time, their greenish light was everywhere. Rachel simply felt that everything before her eyes was part of a dream. In the darkness, these lights formed a layer around her body. Rachel blinked in awe. She looked up at this wondrous scene and felt as if her world had been overturned. Episode 674 A Romantic Proposal What exactly was this? She looked around with her hand over her mouth. Wow, this place. It really looks like the Milky Way. Just then, the warm body close to hers had unknowingly moved closer to her. She did not realize it, even when it came into contact with her body. It was only when she sensed a gentle gaze from beside her that she slowly turned her head around. Immediately, she saw the man before her eyes as deep as the starry sky. There was a hint of a smile in his eyes and a gentle warmth, more constant than what the Milky Way exuded from them in waves. His hand had already instinctively moved to her shoulder. He looked at Rachel with his eyes narrowed sensually, as if he was tipsy. He looked up at Rachel and said, I told you earlier that you would regret it. The words that came out of his thin lips were ridiculously sensual. He smiled faintly while looking at her. Against the background of countless lights, he said to her, Even though you really took it so far... Since you know that you were in the wrong and even voluntarily came after me, I'll reward you. Huh? What? She looked up at him. She did not know when a blue velvet box had suddenly appeared in his hands. She paused for a bit, with her eyes fixed on the box. He opened the box delicately. Inside was a diamond that sparkled even more than the stars. It dazzled brightly under the starlight. He slowly brought the diamond up and looked at her. Rachel, I know that you've been under a lot of stress lately. I know that you're angry with me. I know that it's my fault for making you go through this stress with me. Rachel's throat bobbed and a sour feeling made its way up her nose. Yes, she was under a lot of stress, but she had never voiced it. To be honest, she was not afraid of pressure, either. 
She'd been trained since she was young and was able to withstand very high amounts of pressure. However, she was afraid that there were too many of these incidents. So many that she and Aaron would really break up one day. Aaron said, But even so, even if you're stressed out from being together with me, being second-guessed, being cursed at and being scolded, I still don't want to let you go. I don't want to set you free at all and let you be at ease. On the contrary, I want us to just get married. Rachel seemed like a complete fool as she stood there and watched Aaron lift the ring up. He gazed at her face and said, Let's hold our wedding soon. Rachel looked up. For a moment, she felt that her eyes were heating up and her lips were trembling. You, are you proposing to me right now? Aaron said, no. Seeing as Rachel was not budging at all, Aaron pulled her hand up directly and put the ring on her finger while saying, I'm kidnapping you as my bride. What? Rachel saw that the ring was already on her ring finger. Although the ring was very light, she nevertheless felt that a heavy object suddenly seemed to have been placed on her hand. Aaron said, Because I won't allow you to refuse the ring, and I won't allow you to reject me either. All right, he really was kidnapping her as his bride. But it was truly a romantic kidnapping. Rachel lifted her hand to look at the ring that was glittering in gold. Aaron smiled as he looked down and grabbed her hand. He clasped her hand tightly in his hand along with the ring. Thereafter, he lowered his head and quickly captured her lips in a kiss. He was really good at skipping steps. She still had not said, I do. She still had not looked up and stood on her tiptoes, allowing him to kiss her. However, he had already taken the initiative to kiss her, pressing his lips to hers and roughly prying them open. Hey, 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 shouldn't proposal kisses be light? Why was this kiss deepening more and more, and even continuing for such a long time? Rachel only sensed that something was amiss when she heard some strange buzzing sounds from behind her. She hastily pushed Aaron away and looked up only to see Anna and Blake watching them from behind. Anna looked at the fireflies all around them and then at the couple standing in the middle of all this. Then she smiled and said, Aaron, you can really shock someone to death when you try to be romantic. However, Blake stood at the side with his arms crossed. Pity that you're so old-fashioned. Anna replied, What do you know? No matter how old-fashioned it is, girls will like it anyway. Ha, are you telling me that you want a proposal like this too? It's a pity that you definitely won't have one in this lifetime since you're already married to me. I'm married, but I can still marry again in the future. What did you say? Anna! Blake's expression changed completely. Rachel looked at the two of them speechlessly. Suddenly, she realized that something was amiss. Her eyes widened as she pointed at the two of them. Hey, you guys didn't plan this with Aaron way beforehand, right? Blake broke into a sheepish smile. Well, Anna said, of course. You don't know Blake well enough. One billion RMB in capital funds is enough to bribe him. Whatever he said about looking after you like an older brother, they were all just fancy words. 
Blake glared at Anna and said to Rachel, My younger sister, I wanted to help you two, for real. I've always been on your side, but the thing is, Aaron wanted to propose to you. He said that he wanted to hold a wedding with you, so I had no choice but to help him. I was being considerate of you. You were trying to be a little difficult anyway. You weren't really planning to divorce him. Fine. He was really unreliable. Aaron put his arm around Rachel, looked down and said, See? Now you know that you can't believe any other man except me in the future. Blake said, You're the one she shouldn't trust. Look at how well you acted earlier. You seemed genuinely angry and were throwing a tantrum like a child. I was so surprised that I thought you were really being difficult. But in the end, it was all to trick Rachel into approaching you. All is fair in love and war, Aaron said nonchalantly, with his eyebrows raised. Anna said, All right, since we're done here, can you bring back some of these fireflies for me? Ah, right. There were still many fireflies. Rachel looked at the fireflies. Wow, where did you get so many fireflies? Aaron replied, We caught them. Come on, let's go have some barbecue. Oh, oh, okay. Blake shook his head and told Anna, Look, I was helping Rachel by doing this. At the very least, she has successfully gotten through a day. If not for my help, of course, she would not match Aaron's intelligence. Anna asked, What? Did you think that we caught the fireflies? There are so many. There must be at least a few thousand fireflies. How could we have possibly caught them? We paid a high price to have them shipped over. We even had them shipped here from the far south only today. Do you really think this is romantic? We were totally burning a hole in our wallets. Sure enough, people found out about the proposal that night. Someone directly commented on WeChat. Aaron spent a lot of money buying so many fireflies. I heard that it was to create a romantic setting for Rachel. Wow, fireflies. It sounds so romantic. Aaron treats her so well. Episode 675. How could they? When you have money, you don't have to think about it. You can have romance if you want to have it. It only depends on whether you want it or not. Dear me, I really want a boyfriend like Aaron. Hey, you're so greedy. If it were me, I wouldn't even need Aaron to be so romantic. It would be enough for Aaron to be my boyfriend. Even if he was out playing around all the time, it wouldn't matter if he did anything wrong. I would forgive him completely just by looking at his face. These people. Jokingly, they looked at each other disdainfully before scattering in all directions. Aaron was still going to stay at the Cooper residence for the night. That night, Aaron sneaked into Rachel's room directly. Rachel looked at Aaron gloomily. You, you, you... Why did you come in here in the middle of the night? Not daring to switch on the lights, she looked at the man at the door and saw that he was a little gloomy. They had already agreed to stay in two different rooms so that they would not roll around in bed together and cause the maids to speculate and spread rumors everywhere out of boredom. But Aaron had actually come to knock on her down in the middle of the night. Aaron held her chin and pushed her directly against the wall before kissing her lips. It's fine. No one saw me. He stuck his leg out and closed the door at the same time. Then he pressed her up against the wall immediately. 
at the hospital. At least ten people sent messages to Melissa and called her to tell her that everyone was talking about how Aaron had proposed to Rachel, and the two of them were about to hold their wedding very soon. Melissa sat there and looked at the messages over and over again. She could not believe it. She could not believe it. It might have been a rumor if it came from only one person, but if everyone was saying the same thing... Melissa sat there and let out a shout. She thought to herself indignantly, Rachel, you're so shameless. What are you trying to prove by holding a wedding now? You've already been married for so long, but you're only holding a wedding now? What exactly are you trying to prove? Melissa whipped out her phone. With her eyes narrowed, she spoke lowly into her phone and said, Father... Do me a favor right now. The next day, Abby called Rachel to ask where she was. Then she came to the Cooper residence to look for Rachel so that they could go to the company together. As Blair had yet to return from the South Town, Rachel had to oversee matters in the company. However, she and Blair had divided their responsibilities. She was in charge of acting while Blair was in charge of managing the company's affairs. Thus, she was completely unable to understand some of the documents. When she asked Abby, Abby had trouble even looking at them and could only say, it looks like I have to learn a little bit about how to do these things. Rachel said, sure, you can learn it if you're interested. There is skilled personnel in the company who can help you too. Abby said, It's not that I'm interested in it. I just find myself a failure because I'm so useless right now. Rachel looked at those numbers and forms. She was left with no choice but to ask the great company president for help. Thus, she immediately called Aaron and said, Aaron, what do I do? I can't understand these figures at all. What figures? Some figures from the company. On the other end of the line, Aaron remained silent for some time before saying, Bring it to me, and I'll help you look at it. You mean, go to your company? What else? Are you telling me to go to your company to take a look at it? He was right. She was the one asking him for help. It would not be nice to ask him to come over. She hastily agreed and went to Aaron's company with the documents. Meanwhile, Abby stayed at the company to learn about other things. Abby loitered around the company in intense boredom. Everyone was extremely polite to this rich young heiress and left her alone to loiter around. Abby walked around and heard someone speaking. It turned out that she was in a practice room. She went in and saw a boy standing there and talking. He had a handsome appearance and had a very sunny disposition. From his face, it appeared that he was at most a few years older than her. He still looked very young. She stood there, finding him quite amusing. However, after watching for some time, she accidentally stepped on something. With a resounding click, The young man inside saw Abby. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to disturb you, Abby quickly said. The person inside happened to be Daniel. He looked at Abby and said, Oh, it's you. He then closed his script. Abby walked in. Do you know who I am? Hmm, everyone in the company knows that you're Abby. You're the rich heiress from Spain who came back with Rachel. Abby walked towards him and saw that he was still packing up his things. She could not help but ask, Really? Do they all know me? Hey, what were you doing earlier? I was practicing my positioning, Daniel continued, for a television series. Oh, so you're an actor. No wonder you look quite handsome. It was true. 
Abby had seen all kinds of men. There were countless handsome men in Hollywood of different nationalities and different types. So to her, Daniel was considered a pretty good-looking man. He was not the most handsome, but he gave off a very pure and pleasant aura. It was probably his young age and his youthful demeanor that made him seem innocent. At her compliment, he turned around to look at her. She tilted her head and smiled. She asked, What is your role? Daniel replied, I'm the second male lead this time and have more scenes than usual. It's my first time having so many scenes, so I must practice. The second male lead? Is that a very difficult role to get? Hmm, Blair went through many difficulties to ask for the role on my behalf. I only got the role after I successfully passed the audition. It sounds like being an actor is a very difficult job. Not really. You can probably be one if you want to, he said as he pulled his backpack off the ground and carried it on his back. Seeing that he was about to leave, Abby chased after him and asked, What do you mean I can be one if I want to? I heard that your family's very rich. As long as you want it, your father will definitely invest so that you can be an actress. Furthermore, you have a pretty good image. It will be easy for you to become famous. Hey, she continued. You think that I'm a rich heiress, right? That I live a comfortable and luxurious life. That I can get whatever I want, whenever I want it. Right? The way she challenged Daniel immediately reminded him of someone else. Annie Alessandra. As Eric's most beloved daughter, she lived a comfortable and luxurious life. However, in actual fact, she could not do anything she wanted to do. He paused and turned around to look at her. After hesitating slightly, he asked, Are you living in Spain? Not really. My father has properties in many parts of America. I can basically stay wherever I want to, but I really don't know where I live exactly. There were many places where she could stay, but this also meant that she did not know if she had a true home. Daniel asked, Oh, then do you know Eric's family? Uh, of course I do. Do you know their daughter, the one named Annie? Hmm, I think I've met her before. Why? Do you know her? Daniel nodded and sucked in a breath before smiling. You can say that. Although Abby was very curious, she could only continue walking out with him, seeing that he was not willing to divulge too much. That's it for today, guys. If you want to inspire me more, you can buy me a puppy. Thank you for listening.